Hello, everybody! My name's Anastasia Zelinsky, and I am the human behind Freakin' Art. Today, we are talking about pattern. So, pattern uh, is just like repeated shapes, or textures, or lines, or colors. We use this a lot in artwork to unify our artwork, or to create a sense of movement within a piece. Uh, there can be many different patterns going on within one piece, and when that happens, we call each of those different patterns motifs. So, um, pattern can be used decoratively in your work, or it can be used as underlying structure to add, like I said, unity to your work or create a sense of movement. So there are a couple different kinds of patterns. Um, we'll just briefly talk about them. You got your geometrical one highlighted by Lisa lovely square you have symmetrical patterns so when it's the same thing on either side but like in your image you have a uh, radial patterns which you can find in nature with flowers or sunshine and then uh, spirals which you can also see in nature if you're, you know, looking at a snail shell or something. Okay. So today we're going to do an activity together and make a simple pattern. Together we're going to use a radial idea. And then we're going to uh, turn this into a repeating pattern. Um, if this seems overwhelming, you could also just use the same idea and take up the whole page and make one big pattern, your composition as a whole pattern, and just focus on using, again, we're gonna do the radial idea and dividing it so you have different motifs, different patterns going on in different areas. Share um, some artists that use this in the work. Look at classic examples first. Got uh, Gustav Klimt here. He is an Austrian artist, very famous. And uh, he uses his pattern more in a decorative sense. You can see he's using that idea of shape that we talked about last week and breaking up his composition into lots of shapes. And then he has different areas of pattern. So he has different motifs of pattern going on within that one piece. Okay, and then, ah! <laughs> so much for marking that page. Okay, and then, ah! <laughs> oh man, I'm full of technical difficulties today. Okay, here we go. Let's hope that works. And flip it around. Jesus Christ. Cheese and rice. Cheese and rice. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Happy Friday, everybody. So, and then the next artist we're going to look at is one of my favorite painters, the Yard. He's a French painter. And he uses this idea of pattern um, as well in his work to unify it. And as you can see, he's breaking up the whole composition into different big shapes, and then he has the different patterns to describe the natural areas going in there. So different motifs to describe the different areas, different patterns to describe different things. Okay. The next artist we're going to look at is a wonderful artist, American artist, Kehendi Wiley. If you can see his, his work in person, you should. It's so awesome. It's like really big and beautiful and bright and you get completely lost in the patterns. So he uses patterns in his work a lot uh, decoratively, but he also uses it kind of as a skeleton to unify everything. You can see he often brings the pattern in front of his figures. And here you can see, again, he has several patterns going on within his piece. And he has the uh, symmetrical patterns here. So he has different motifs, so several patterns going on within the piece. 
And then another example of his painting. Here we go again. And so this, again, he's using it more decoratively or as a skeleton to tie the whole piece together, uh, bringing that pattern up in the foreground as well. Um, another amazing artist who's contemporary artist, Yayoi Kusama, she's Japanese. Um, if you get to see her work in person, you totally should. Her installations are amazing. Her paintings are big and bright and beautiful. So she, in some of her paintings, she's taking up the area and dividing it into different shapes and then creating different patterns within the painting. So every different area she uses as that opportunity to make a different motif. And then you can see it again here. So she just divided up her composition into shapes and then she has all these different motifs, so different kinds of patterns going on within that. And then lastly, we're gonna look at MC Escher. So Escher's from the Netherlands. He's probably one of the most famous pattern makers. There's so many examples, it's hard to choose one, but and here, here, he's made this repeating interlocking pattern of lizards. And then I want to show this one because this is his sketch of the pattern. And then here, you can see it showing up again, the pattern in his piece. And then he's taken that idea, that repeated shape of the lizards, and he has them actually walking around his still life. So here's a good example of a radial pattern. Again, using that interlocking shapes to create a radial pattern. And that's makes up the whole composition. It's just the pattern. And then just to give you an idea of how simple it can be, because MC Escher is really talented. And we can't all draw like that, but see, it's, he's just broken it down into shapes. Again, this is a radial pattern of interlocking shapes, and they're bigger in the center, and then they get smaller as they go out. Okay. So, some things you could use for today. A piece of paper, a pencil or pen. Some different colored crayons, hello, crayons or um, pencils or paint works too. If you're going to use paint, you might want to tape down your piece of paper because we're going to be manhandling that paper. You don't want to smudge it. Um, and then we're going to want some circles to trace. I have a quarter and then a tin, um, a couple different sizes. We're going to be doing radial patterns. But before we start, let's do a little stretch and focus. So everybody, just roll your shoulders back. Ooh, that was good. And just squish them up to your ears and back down. And then we'll all take in a big deep breath. We definitely need another one of those. Okay, are we ready to focus and make some art? So I'm gonna get out my little makeshift easel here. Now again, you can choose to do one big radial pattern, take up the whole piece of paper, because working small is tiresome. Um, or you can follow along and we're gonna do this flower power pattern that I came up with. And uh, repeat it. Okay. So we're going to start with our piece of paper and we're going to fold it. Now you can fold it as many times as you want. That's just going to be how many times you're repeating your pattern. So you could do, this is 16 times. These are really tiny. So you'd have to make a really simple 
pattern or have a really fine pencil or something or just do super simple pattern if you wanted to do it that many times. I'm just gonna do uh, my pattern repeated four times. So I'm gonna take my piece of paper and fold it in half one way. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're not computers. If you want it to be perfect, you can use your ruler or straight edge to measure it out. Okay. So we folded it in half one way and then we folded it in half again. Now, like I said, we're gonna do a radial pattern. So I'm gonna start with a big circle and just try to get it somewhere in the middle. You might wanna start by tracing with a pencil. I'm gonna use a Sharpie so you guys can see everything. And also my crayons are getting down to their last nubs here. So, got this circle going. Uh, looks nice. Now remember, we wanna keep our original pattern, the, the base pattern, pretty simple because we're gonna wanna try to repeat it. Next, I take my quarter. I'm just visually place that where it's, I think the middle is. And again, you can make this as exact as you want. You can make a whole grid so your pattern is perfect. Perfect doesn't really matter to me. I like the wobbly. I think it adds like a, a good amount of energy to something when you don't have perfect lines and perfect shapes. But that's just me. I've never been really good about coloring in between the lines. So, so I have my two circles. Um, next, I'm gonna decide to divide this into four different areas behind it because I wanna have opportunity to do different motifs, different patterns within my piece. So I'm gonna start probably with the center here and do a spiral. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead with the radial design and do some flowers. So I'm just adding my petals here. Rico is on a tear right now. I don't know who's outside. <laughs> so again, you don't have to have your pattern look exactly like my pattern. This is just to give you an idea of how we can create our own pattern using simple shapes and use it to unify our artwork. Okay. So next I'm gonna think about a motif I wanna have in each side. I'm gonna go ahead and do polka dots cause I love polka dots. So we'll do some big, I guess those are kind of small polka dots here. And I'm gonna to wanna to repeat my pattern. You can choose to do a different pattern in every area, every different shape you demarcate it here, or you can do um, two different ones, all the same. Now, we should think a little bit about our colors we're gonna use as we draw out our different motifs and patterns here. I think, um, keep it less confusing you should stick to two and you can always use black as a color too or the white of the page and uh, I got out two different color choices here I got some complementary colors so these are the colors that are opposite each other on a color wheel a red and a green and when they're together they make a really dynamic visual effect 
because they're opposing each other, so it's almost like they're vibrating. Um, and my other color choice was going with a monochromatic, which again adds a sense of unity to your piece. And monochromatic is when you work within one color scheme. So I had two different values, which is the amount of light of dark in the piece, in the color. I have two different values of blue here. So I'm gonna go with the uh, monochromatic color scheme. So again, um, you can be doing your big pattern, your big radio pattern, just on one whole page or working on a smaller one. I'm going to just start coloring in. Now remember, pattern can be the geometric shapes. It can be the more natural shapes that we find in our daily life, like spirals. It can also be texture. If you have a repeated area of texture or a repeated area of color, then that creates a pattern within your work as well. So I'm gonna start with just doing a big block of color here. And obviously the longer you spend on your piece, the more detailed it can be. Um, you could have cleaner, sharper edges. You know, but this is just to give you an idea of where to start. Um, next I'm going to take, take my dark blue here, I'm going to go inside my polka dot motif on these two corners here. And as you're coloring in, you can think about the different kind of texture you want to be created with your mark. Do you want it just to be smooth as possible? Or do you want to have it be a little bit more rough, like over here? Okay. So the more time I take on this, the nicer it would look. I'm just coloring in these different areas of my pattern and I want to keep, I'm choosing to keep my motifs the same. But you can switch it up, the colors within the motifs or within your final pattern. And again, you could be using whatever you have around the house, whether it be paint or markers or colored pencils. You could even cut up pieces of paper and make a pattern using our collage techniques. Okay. So, I'm gonna have these two corners be a pattern that's based more in texture. So I'm just gonna do some marks over here. But I want, I'm keeping it somewhat simple because I want to be able to repeat it. ourselves to two colors and either a black or a really dark third color is going to help us unify our piece. Okay, I don't think I'll have enough time to color in the whole thing. But this 
give you an idea so far of this is my pattern. Now I want to repeat it. So I'm going to open up my paper and you can choose to either use your straight edge and actually make black marks or just use uh, the delineation between the different patterns instead of actually making a big black line. So then we're going to repeat our pattern here. So remember, we kept it simple at first. Our base pattern, pattern was really simple, so we could easily repeat it. Another circle in the circle. Okay, that's a little bit of a wonky circle, but that's okay. I am not a machine. Okay, now I'm going to do my spiral pattern in the center, and then I'm going to divide the back. And this background into four so I can have my different motifs here and then again with my petals which these shapes here you know you can choose to have them be individual shapes or you can make it just some mark making completely up to you You know, your artwork should look like your artwork. It shouldn't look like mine. This is more or less to give you an idea of how you can make your own confidence and give you, I'm sorry, make your own pattern and give you the confidence to make it on your own at home. Okay, so I have my flower and then I'm going to look. On my original pattern I did, I had the polka dots on the far left square, so put in polka dots here. And polka dots on the opposite corner. Again, if you wanted perfect circles, you could get a penny or something and trace it. So now I have the base for my pattern. And I could go ahead and color it in, in the same color. Or I could use a different color scheme. Um, so then you would just open it up and repeat that again. So the challenge today is to either complete your big radial pattern with the different motifs within it, and you can have your motifs, your different patterns, repeat themselves, or you could have every single different shape be a completely different pattern. It's up to you. And then the next challenge would be to have your pattern be a repeating pattern by following the steps I just showed you and you could do it with whatever color scheme you want but you know to keep it simple I would choose two colors at first so you don't get confused and uh, think about maybe your complementary colors or using a monochromatic color scheme so that was our little lesson today on pattern I think um, there's a lot you can do with it. I use it in my own work with, in conjunction with shape to break up areas of my piece into different shapes. And then I choose different motifs of patterns to fill in those shapes. So it's a really good tool that we can use to help unify our artwork and create a sense of rhythm and balance within it. Now, if you don't feel like drawing, uh, another thing you could do is you could walk around outside or in your yard 
and uh, or even around your house and see the different patterns that you have around your house. Maybe you can find a radial one like I did on my sarong here with this sun. Or maybe you will find a symmetrical pattern like this. Or something that's more organic and natural. So let me know. I would love to see the artwork you make. So please tag me in all your creations that you do make. And if you don't make anything, that's totally fine. You, this video is going to be up on YouTube in case you feel inspired to make some artwork later. And again, if you can donate, please do. Venmo is at Anastasia Zelinsky. PayPal is Tasha H. And I will post this information with uh, the artists that we looked at today, along with the link for the YouTube video here in about an hour. So thank you guys so much. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon and a beautiful day. And thank you for making art with me. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.